Hi, Silly. How are you? I'm fine, good. Yourself? I'm great, thank you. Uh, you know, thanks so much for doing this interview with me. I, I really appreciate it. It's cool, man. Like I said, the pledge is all mine. Awesome. Well, you know, part of the reason why I'm doing this, or why I asked, asked to do this with you, uh, I've watched quite a few of your most recent videos, which uh, have all gone viral, which is incredible. Um, and they truly inspired me and, and have actually become part of the content I actually share with my community on my Facebook page and on my website. So after seeing the impact that, that you, you're making with uh, your incredible words, uh, I really just wanted to sit down with you and ask you a few questions about what's really inspired you to deliver this work to the world. That's cool, man. I mean, I'd be more than happy to answer anything. Cool. So with that being said, uh, I'd love to get started. Cool. So, my first question to you, um, just to kind of as an introduction, so before we really get into the, the, the bigger questions, yeah. can you share uh, just a little bit about yourself and your background? Um, originally, I'm from London, um, Wood Green, that's, that's the north part of London, and I, I pretty much grew up here. I spent a little time in Africa where my dad lives when I was younger, but I was born here and I was pretty much bred here. And most of my time here, it was really just trying to balance. It's, it's not the best environment in terms of like when it's quite affluent in crime, etc. So most of my time was trying to stay away from going down the wrong path to an extent. But yeah, I spent and then I mean I spent a lot of my um, a lot of my time away um, out of London in Sheffield and Middlesbrough. Where I went to study. So most most of my life has just been in the educational kind of system and being around this environment of the people that I'm around and from there. And when I went to uni, that's when I started doing that spoken word, and that was in Sheffield, and that's in, in the north of England, as opposed to his way, it's very far from London. Right. And that's where the spoken word really took to life when I started um, putting it out there. Prior to that, I always used to write, but it was more just for, like, expressive purposes, you know what I mean? Just for me. And um, during, I was studying law in Sheffield, and I studied the law, and then I finished, and then I came back to Wood Green, and it felt like I'd gone all the way around in a circle. And then I, I kind of saw a lot of opportunities that didn't exist that I thought would exist based on having been finished in um, university. And then I just kind of went into the creative sphere and carried on doing what I'm doing now. And that's taken me about three years ago to the point I am now. Wow. Cool. That's, uh, uh, you, you said you kind of lived in an area where it wasn't so affluent and things were a little bit challenging. What, what kind of experiences did you kind of have to go through when you were growing up? I mean, anyone who is from um, an area of kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't want to use the wrong term, you know what I mean. But the, the conventional term would be kind of ghetto, kind of area, you know what I mean. So there's always the, the issue of like, you know, um, there was gun crime, knife crime, you know, you get involved in these things, drug dealing. There's a lot of police. I mean, even as we're interviewing, I'm sure you could hear the sirens at, at the start of it, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot of that. There's a lot of violence, and there was a lot of um, as a young adult, there was a, it was difficulty trying to fit in, you know what I mean, trying to. You know, the differentiate between what's right and wrong, but at the same time wanting to be accepted within that society. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've seen quite a few things go on here, you know what I mean? Right. So, that kind of leads me to my next question, because so, I'm, uh, I'm kind of curious about this now. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what actually inspired you to become uh, this spoken word artist, and w why did you feel it was important to share your message with people? I'm sure... It comes a little bit from your background to some extent, um, so I'm just curious to know. Uh, um, the reason I wanted to, what inspired me, I, I feel like I did. It wasn't a conscious decision that I wanted to be this person that was speaking out about all that stuff. You know what I mean? I feel like when a person has a certain role or they have a path that's chosen for them, the, in circumstances kind of lead up to it. You know what I mean? And what came, what enabled me or caused me to start um, projecting my work outwards into the wider world was just the frustrations of not being having any other kind of outlet or not being able to have any other means for me as a person to fit into the world. You know what I mean? That was the only means in which I could contribute. You know what I mean? The same way some people have certain skills whereby they're good at fixing things, so they design computers, or they're in in innovative, so they design Apple and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. For me, that was pretty much my only contribution to the world. So that's what the spoken. That's what made me become that. It wasn't a conscious choice. I kind of just formed into it. And what led up to it was, I mean, I just like to express myself. I've always been very creative, and I've always enjoyed writing. If I wasn't doing spoken word, I'd probably write a novel or something like that. If I hadn't gone down the traditional route of being a lawyer, but I kind of 
I kind of when it was faced with me got and pursuing um, my my educational route um, of being a lawyer and doing the LPC in the next step, or me just going out into the world and discover it. I kind of just weighed up the two options, and I thought not only which would I enjoy more, but which did I feel I'd be better at, better at, and which which could I give more back to the world or my people around me. So it kind of just it it was a no brainer really for me. You know what I mean? Wow. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's. I mean, a, a lot of people know that they have uh, that piece inside of them, but don't really go out there and do do something about it. So I think it's a testament to your belief in yourself that kind of. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I guess I often say people thinking. always say um, they need to choose what's gonna the most secure route for them, what's gonna make them most successful. But I feel you can't really aspire to be as successful as you want to be in something unless you really enjoy it, you know what I mean? Right. If you do something just because you have to or you're good at it, you end up becoming passive and just doing it because you can, as opposed to when you have a passion for something, you really, that's for me, that's the most secure route for you to take because that's what you're really going to enjoy doing it and take it to the fullest extent, you know what I mean? And that's how I just see it, that's how I saw it. Absolutely, no, I totally agree with you. Uh, this kind of leads me to my next, my next question. <laughs> um, so your video, your first, I mean, you've done lots of videos before this, yeah, yeah. but your first main video, uh, Why I Hate School But Love Education, uh, it went viral so quickly. Yeah. Um, did, did you ever expect that to happen? And why, why did you actually want to share that particular message with people? What was it about that message that was important to you? Um, I mean, I always wanted the videos to go viral, but to expect it to go viral to that extent... I can't say that I expected it like that, you know what I mean? But on the back of your head, everyone has a dream or, you know what I mean? When something happens, it's kind of like the realisation of it, you never really can appreciate that until you're in that moment. So in that in that respect, I always kind of wanted my videos, people to appreciate my art, but for it to go viral like that, I mean, especially the week and the time in which it did, I didn't expect it to that extent, you know what I mean? I, I just released it like I released all my other videos. Yes. What, what I wanted to share that message, I mean... If you listen to a lot of my stuff, education kind of becomes a reoccurring theme within it simply because um, I'm a young adult. I spent most of my life within the educational system. Mo the majority of my life, I've been more times in the educational system than I have been out of it, it, it through the span of my life. So, I mean, I find as an artist, what you write best about is what is personal to you. Mm -hmm. And for me, that, that, that confusion that I'd faced between education and schooling my whole life was something which I felt like, a lot of people are going through, particularly as a student, and there's no one out there who's going to sit you aside. Maybe some people are lucky enough and say to you that this is what schooling is, this is what education is. Make the most out of your schooling by actually valuing the education or learn that the education exists outside of schooling. And I feel that's what that's what caused me to go a particular route and led me down a lot of routes in my life, not understanding the difference between the two. So I just wanted to highlight it and I felt if a student is sitting there right now confused and they don't understand what they're doing, if I could just add some kind of value to them, then that's cool, you know what I mean? And I just wrote, I just wrote that from a very personal perspective and how I view it. So a lot of people get caught up in statistics and um, bogged down on this is right, that is wrong. I just wrote it from a very personal perspective because I knew that's how I felt as a student and I'm sure as some, anyone who's a student or even just who cares about learning would would appreciate it through, through that way that I did it. Mm -hmm. Well, when I when I first watched your video, I can't remember exactly when I saw it. I think it had already gone viral by that point. Yeah. Um, but I was, I mean, I was inspired by it purely because of the business that I'm building, uh, oh, okay. which, which is really all about providing an education system uh, that's designed and created by students for students. Yeah. Um, which I think, which I think, in my opinion, is more empowering because. Then you, then you have people learning what they actually want to learn and, and graduating yeah. in areas that really are meaningful and fulfilling to them. So when I watched that video, I was like, i got to find this guy. i got to get in contact <laughs> with this guy uh, because he's, he's speaking what I can't articulate in that way. Um, yeah. And I, I really wanted to share that. So, you know, just, you know, if, if this is all I got out of, the, out of the interview, I'm grateful for that purely because, <laughs> of, because of what that represented. So, um, yeah, very, very powerful message. I know it's impacted a lot of people um, was in my community just as much as, you know, worldwide. So yeah. uh, I, I think your focus on education and the way you explain it and the way you speak about it in relation to um, your own experiences is, is, is really powerful. So Thank you. You know, that's, that's amazing. Thank um, you. Now, a few months ago, 
uh, or a few months later, actually, you released another video. Yeah. Uh, which was called, I will not uh, let an exam result decide my fate. Again, yeah. this video went viral. Um, and, you know, what I can see is, well, and you kind of said it anyway in, in another way, but I can see that you're kind of challenging the current education model of, a little bit and looking, yeah. at, looking at education from a different perspective. Why do you believe, I know you might have answered this already, but why do you believe it's important for you to do that, to look at education differently and to, to bring it into a different light? Um, because I feel as a whole in society, a lot of the institutions which have been established, I mean, it, they were established in a time and generation which they were applicable to, you know what I mean? But right now in the modern context or in the environment that we live in, it's not applicable to so many people. And like you said, um, some people can't articul to articulate it the way they want to. And I, I mean, fortunate to God, I can articulate it the way which I think allows a lot of people to appreciate it. So when I did I will not let an exam result beside my face, it's kind of like what you do. I, I took away from why I hate school, but I love education, talk about it broadly, and I talk about it specifically from a student's perspective or someone who's in education or someone who understands th th how it doesn't relate to the society at the moment. And I think it's, it's, it's important to know this because if the system that's supposed to benefit us are not moving to accommodate with the changes in society, it's detrimental to not just individuals but kind of Society, the whole everybody, you know, what I mean, to everybody's empowerment because we're not, we're not progressing. The institutions are not ac accommodating for the changes, and so many people are getting left out. I always try to feel that I'm fortunate enough to have understood that and learned to use it to my advantage. But a lot of people haven't, and because the system, the way it is, a lot of people will get lost in it and they'll end up falling at the bottom of end of it. And it, I don't think it's fair, you know what I mean? It's a, there's a big like no man left behind kind of ethos in in my head. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, like I said, you know, my business is all about helping uh, kids really learn according to their own values, their own beliefs, and so forth. And one of the things I've noticed about the education system uh, is, is it doesn't really cater for a lot of creative people out there, unfortunately. Um, and for me, that for me, that's quite challenging because even though I'm very logical, I can also be incredibly creative. Yeah. yeah, and I connect with a lot of those kids who get lots of different labels uh, cast on them because they don't kind of fit within that that system yeah, as sure. easily. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that, this last vi well, that that video that you that you put up about exam results and all that kind of stuff, I think that was really really important because there are a lot of kids, particularly creative kids, who don't always do exceptionally well, and yeah. think that because they don't do well, they're not going to achieve much. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, it doesn't cater for individualism. And, and as society, that's what we're all individuals, you know what I mean? And then, it, essentially, it becomes, it makes being an individual taboo, you know what I mean? If you don't fit in within. And that doesn't, that's not right, you know what I mean? The world is, was not forged like that. And the world is not changed like that, you know what I mean? There's nothing happens if everybody just wants to be the same. Absolutely. So I definitely, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I wanted yeah. to empower people, yeah, to be themselves. Awesome, awesome. Well, recently... You released uh, your EP um, yeah. and an awesome new video called Parents Are the Hardest People to Please. This one I was waiting to see. Oh. Um, why? Because a lot of what I teach and a lot of what I speak about in my business has a huge focus on shifting the perspective of parents in order to empower children in a different way. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting to see what you had to say about that. So what I wanted to ask you is, have you found in your own experience that it's challenging to be who you are when parents and teachers want to, you know, kind of steer us in their own way? Have you found that to be a difficult thing to deal with yourself? Yeah, most definitely. I even did a video after explaining my own personal experience with my parents. And I, I definitely think what I was saying in the video was that you go out into the world and you're trying to be successful in society, automatically nobody's going to believe in you because they think, who, who are you? Now, when you come back into the household and they're not believing in that same trying to success, it makes it so difficult because there's no support base or foundation for you trying to ascertain to be that successful. So I think it's, it's ne it makes it extremely difficult. It makes it not impossible, nothing's impossible. It makes it next to impossible when your family and your parents, when you're young or even when you're grown, when you need any kind of support, you go for them. And then when there's something that's so important to you and you can't go to them for that same kind of support, I think it makes it so difficult. For me personally, it was extremely difficult. But luckily I had people around me 
who believed in what I was trying to do and people that supported it. But without those, I don't know how I would have had the self-belief or confidence to go forward. So I think it's imperative that in the household there's at least that structure or that foundation for, for parents to do that. And I, but I mean, it's not their fault because like I was saying, generational, the times have changed so fast, so fast that their perceptions are still towards how the convention or the system was originally and they haven't accommodated for the new changes and that's the whole purpose of the video was to try and make them widen their perception and it's overwhelming because parents do message me and say you know i never looked at it like that i never thought about it like that you know what i mean so I, so i i, I mean and that, that was a video that was very close to home as well because me and my mum we went back and forth until eventually she came around right um what i want to what i wanted to ask you i mean what did you, I know? I know you kind of said that you had a support network around you outside of your family that kind of helped, you know, kind of believed in you, and made, uh, helped make it easier for you to, to step into what you're doing. But from let, let's say, if there are any kids watching this or any teens watching this, what did you do to kind of deal with that situation with your with your mum? Like, how did you handle that? What <laughs> steps did you take uh, to kind of break through that as best as you could? I personally, um, I personally think I could have handled it better. I, I, I just, I went on, cause I had that support system. I was a bit rebellious in the extent that I, I said to her, "Listen, I believe in myself, and that's that's it. You know, what I mean, whether you believe me or not, I'm going to prove to you." Which is not the best way to handle it. What I did find, which was extremely effective, which I'm more proud of myself, was I sat down and explained to her what I was trying to do, and I said to her, yeah, "Give me a deadline." Okay, you know, I have my method, you have yours. So give me a deadline to make mine work out by it. And if it doesn't, then then we can try out your method. And ironically, the deadline was December. And it's funny because December is when I dropped that Why I Hate School But Love Education video and it went viral, you know what I mean? Right. But I definitely think, I think it's, I think it's the communication break breakdown, you know what I mean? Because parents are so used to telling you what to do mm -hmm. as opposed to speaking to you about it that that's what they do in relation to everything. So that's what they were finding. And I'm so used to either listening or, or sneaking around the back, you know what I mean? And yeah. I took that sneaking around the back method, whereas I think it's better to communicate, because I feel if you sit down and explain something and articulate it well enough and show examples of what you're trying to do, it will make a big difference. Because I was speaking to a boy whose mum was actually home educating him, and she'd consciously taken him out of school, but she was complaining that every day he was playing computer games. So he sat down one time and he said to her, um, this is what I'm actually doing on the internet related to computer games. There's a comp computer games. There's a company called Machinima that wants me to take me on. So this is what I'm doing. And he showed her files of work that, that he'd been doing. You know what I mean? As opposed to him just ignoring her and carrying on doing what he was doing. So I think right. that communication can make a big difference. Great. I mean, that's, um, that's incredible advice because I, I know that a lot of kids, I mean, I was the same, uh, <laughs> rebelled against every, you know, everything that I was being told because yeah. I wanted to prove that I could do it. Um, but which is great. I mean, it's great to be able to go out there and want to prove something to yourself. But yeah, that, yeah I, t I totally agree that communicating and sitting down and really opening up a dialogue is probably a, um, a wiser approach, and I think that's great advice for any kids that are watching this. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. My mom actually listened to, she listened to one of my pieces, and I think from that moment she kind of got it, you know what I mean? She listened to it, and she was like, Okay, I understand what he's saying, you know what I mean? So I think it's showing is better than telling, you know, just show them what you're trying to do and, and, and you know, rather than just going off on a tangent, you know what I mean? Right, cool. Um, so I have one final question, and this question is uh, an advice question. Um, <laughs> so what I'd, what I'd love to know is if there's any advice that you could give uh, parents and teachers beyond the video that you, that you recently put out, if there's any advice that you could give them, about what you believe to be the wisest and most powerful ways to empower kids, what do you think that would be? Um, I think I said it already in the videos. Um, I, I honestly think it's communication. You know what I mean? I think it's but outside of the outside of the context of the videos. Um, let me think. I think let them be kids. You know what I mean? I think that would be it. I think let them make mistakes and learn from the mistakes and appreci appreciate the mistakes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Appreciate the mistakes rather than sh shun, shun them, you know what I mean? Because traditionally, someone makes a mistake, you put X next to it and you tell them how to, and you know, and you tell them off, then you say, this is right. But rather, I think, appreciate the mistakes and let them know that they're kids and you was once in that situation. Don't forget that you was once exactly like that, you know what I mean? Right. Cool. I think. Thank yeah, you. that's pretty much in the videos. I can't take it. Yeah. No, no, no. Thank you. I mean, that's uh, that's a great way to kind of end to end everything. So, 
appreciate that. That's cool, man. So, you know, again, I just I wanted to thank you again for answering all my questions. And, oh, that's cool, man. It's and, no problem. And providing all this incredible insight that you know that you have, I, like I'm sure that people who follow you, which include myself, <laughs> um, are waiting for the next installment. I'm, I'm, sure that, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be another one within the next few months. Yeah, um, we're working on it. So we're oh, I'm sure we're for the next few months. Hopefully oh, sooner than that. Yeah. Great, great. So we're all I mean we're all looking for it. You definitely have a way with you definitely have a way with words and and really inspiring people. And I personally believe you're really pushing some boundaries when it comes to traditional learning. And I'm grateful to be able to share that story uh, and your story with our community. Um I mean, you know, as I believe, I think it's so important to break some of the paradigms and the, the boxes that we have in place yeah. um, in order to really give our children an opportunity to grow into who they'd love to become. So, Definitely. you know, your words have power and it's wonderful to give you another platform to be able to share them through. I appreciate um, it. And like I said, you know, you are and I'm, I'm sure you will continue to be an inspiration to many young people. So thank you. Thank you for... For doing what you do, it's it's really important. No problem, it's all good. Cool. Well, thank you. It's cool, man.